A backyard can be a place for gardening, playing catch, or relaxing with friends and family. But why settle for these when you can build a gas station instead? That's what Christina McLean did in her upscale residential neighborhood. But the neighbors were unimpressed, and they decided to teach McLean a thing or two about land use restrictions in the case of Sanborn versus McLean. McLean owned lot number 86 in a residential subdivision in Detroit. The subdivision was created by two developers who initially owned all of the lots. Before the developers sold lot 86, they sold about 20 other lots to individual buyers. The deed to each of these lots included a restriction or servitude that limited the lot to residential use. The developers later sold lot 86 to one of McLean's predecessors. However, that deed didn't include any restrictions. Eventually, the McLean's bought lot 86. None of the deeds in the history of the lot contained a residential restriction. There was a partially built house on the lot, which the McLean's completed and occupied. At this time, all of the surrounding lots likewise contained houses. Several years later, McLean began building a gas station behind her house. The neighbors sued, claiming that McLean's lot was impliedly subject to the same residential restriction that appeared in their deeds. In other words, the neighbors argued that McLean was bound by a so-called implied reciprocal servitude that restricted her lot to residential use. McLean argued that the neighbors couldn't enforce the restriction against her because it didn't appear in her deed and she didn't have notice of the restriction. McLean lost in the trial court, which ordered her to stop construction. She appealed directly to the Michigan Supreme Court.